Ooh, ooh, let's do another one. How about this one? Let's do, uh, change my color. Let's do the tangent of 11 pi sixths. All right, 11 pi six. I'm going to draw myself a little unit circle. And you got to sort of cast your ego on this one because you're going to have to draw this circle a whole bunch. Remember, all students take calculus, right? And I know that the tangent of 11 pi six is equal to the tangent of, if I divide six into 11 pi, I get one pi plus five pi over six. So let's see, tangent of pi, let's change my color, tangent, let's see, that's pi, and then 5 pi 6 gets me, 6 pi 6 would get me all the way back around, so I run into this guy right here, and I know that this is theta equals 11 pi over 6. Now, the thing that we got to figure out is what point corresponds to that. Well, remember, it's got pi 6. This little guy right in here, right here, is pi 6 big. It's actually negative pi 6, right? So it's going to correspond to the same point that gave us pi 6 in the first quadrant. So this point, change one more time, this point right here is root 3 over 2, comma, negative 1 half. Now, tangent, if you recall, is y over x. So I go negative 1 half divided by root 3 over 2. My 2's cancel, and I get negative 1 over root 3, which is ugly. So we rationalize the denominator, and I get negative root 3 over 3. <laughs> and again, this is exactly the same as the tangent of negative pi 6, which is negative root 3 over 3. How cool is that? That's pretty fun, huh? All right, let's do uh, let's do something ugly. Let's go. How about the cosine of negative seventeen thirds pi? Now I know, I realize that I'm focusing in radians here, but the process is exactly the same thing for angles. It's identical. Okay. So let's say negative seventeen thirds pi. So let's think about this. I'm gonna draw myself a circle. My circles are getting a little bit better. And I'm going to figure this thing out. So negative, okay, that means when I draw my angle, I have to go clockwise. But let's, let's check this out. 17 goes into negative, or excuse me, 3 goes into negative 17 five times. So I'm going to have negative 5 pi minus, let's see, 15 minus 2 thirds pi. Ooh, okay. So this could get a little ugly. Negative 5 pi goes, I knew it was going to do that. It goes negative 1 pi, 2 pi, 3 pi, 4 pi, 5 pi, and then I go another 2 thirds of a pi around and I stop right there. Now, think about that. If I go around, it was kind of silly for me to go around all negative 5 pi because I know negative 4 pi just wraps me around twice. Another negative pi gets me to the, the excuse me, over here on the, the negative side of the x-axis. And then negative 2 thirds gets me back over here. Now, if this is, if this is theta equals negative 17 pi thirds, then what can we say? about this angle right there. That angle right there is just pi thirds because if this is negative, if this right here is negative two thirds pi, then that has to be pi thirds. That's kind of cool. So we know automatically that this point, change my sign, this point right here, because remember our pi thirds from our, our first quadrant, it has to be one half comma root 3 halves. And all I got to do now is figure out what the cosine is. Cosine is always the x. So it's 1 half. Once I have cosine, I have secant. If Once I have a point, 
I have sine, cosine, tangent, cosecant, secant, and cotangent. So all I really need is a point, and I'm off to the races. That's pretty cool, huh? All right, let's go ahead and address that nagging feeling that might be in the back of your brain that says, okay, what happens if I've got a not so pretty angle, like say the cosine of 22 degrees? Well, let's look at 22 degrees and figure out what we're looking at in terms of radians. So I do a quick little conversion. I got pi over 180 degrees. My degrees cancel, thank God, and I end up with 11 pi 90ths. Ooh, yuck. That doesn't fall into one of those pretty, I'm going to go ahead and reduce this, one of those pretty values that we had over here. Look at that. That All of our quote-unquote pretty values that we made geometrically had six force quarters halves and then really zeros, right? They had um, multiples of pi. So 22 degrees isn't going to do that for us. So what we, what we got to use is we got to use a calculator. All right. Now, back in the day, they used to have to do these sorts of, of calculations using charts and using algorithms, but thank God we don't live back in the day. All right. Let's notice down here, all scientific calculators are going to have an either, either a degree or a radian setting on them. You probably wondered what that was. Hitherto. However, I've got mine set for degrees. So let's do the cosine of 22 degrees. And we're going to go ahead and hit enter, and we're, it's 0.92718 if we round. Now, I'm going to clear that, and let's make sure that I know what I'm talking about. What did we say that was? It was the cosine of 11 pi. It's cute. They got a little pi there. Divided by 90, wasn't it? And if I hit enter, look at that, 0.92718. But let's wrap our brain around why that is just a little bit. Remember, 22 degrees is going to be underneath this 30 degree angle. So what it's going to be is it's where it intersects the unit circle is going to be lower down here, which means it's going to be closer to 1. Root 3 over 2 is a bigger, or excuse me, is a much smaller number on the x-axis than if I have my degree right there. Okay? Now, let's go back here and play around for just a sec. What did we say that the say the sine of a 60 degree angle is? Okay, the sine of a 60 degree, I better change it into degrees first. The sine of a 60 degree angle, can you visualize that without going to this guy? I'm going to say it's root 3 over 2. Hey, look at that. Sine of a 60 degree angle is the y value, and it's root 3 halves. Now, check this out. If I hit equals, I get that. Ye gad, what is that? Well, if we have to, again, we can use our calculator to figure out what the square root of 3 over 2 is. Watch. If I go the square root of 3, and then I divide by 2, I better get the same value. Well, look at that. That's pretty cool, huh? All right. And they've got it up here for us all nice and neat. All right. So that gives us the ability to figure out the sine, the cosine, and the tangent of any angle measure that we want. And it can verify our beliefs. Remember, your calculator is a tool, not a crutch. If you use it as a crutch, it can be kicked out from under you. One other quick little observation, and it's probably true of your calculator as well, if you've got a TI or if you've got an HP or something like that, it probably doesn't have cosecant, secant, and cotan. Notice sine, cos, tan. But remember, it's just one over those things. So let's play for a sec. Hopefully you remember, I'm going to clear this out, that the cosine of 60 degrees, we're in degrees now, the cosine of 60 degrees is a half, right? So if I want to try and figure out what the secant of 60 degrees is, I simply need to go, clear this out, and go 1 divided by 0.5, and I get 2. And the secant of a 60 degree, excuse me, a 60 degree angle is indeed 2. I hope this was helpful. We'll play around with these more tomorrow in class. Have a great day.